hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? I hope you guys are good. Um, I'm calling this show called uh, Caregivers. Uh, sharing is caring and caregivers, all right? So I got everything around me because I need all this stuff. So it's all in back of me on the table because I never shot from this way. I wanted to do something else or different. And I see the light back there somewhere, but you can't even tell. I'm starting to put the thing on, but I don't want it to be what you call it. But let's see. We're going to start with our stuff. Are different things so you know about the resources and stuff first. Sometimes I do that after and before. So we'll see. We'll see right here. All right. Um, you know I do arts and crafts. So this is one of the the cigar boxes. The guy gave it to me the other day in the store. He gave me one a couple of months ago. I, I wanted a whole bunch of them, but he been giving them to me one at a time. And sometimes you get the wooden ones too. But this looks nice when you paint it, when you spray paint it, put the noodles on it that don't look like noodles you could put anything on there buttons anything you want to put on it to decorate it you know i noticed the boys and the girls did it different ways and so does the men and the women but it's a fun thing to do with your kids your grandkids your family make it a little project with the fam you know what i mean holidays and stuff coming up and you like to play games and talk with the fans and find something family and find something to do with them all the time and sometimes y'all my family too, so I try to do different things with y'all. I love all of my jerseys that I've gotten. My husband bought me a lot of them too, especially the one with Scotty Pippen, my favorite one. I couldn't find that one, but I do have a lot of them, but I love them all. Okay? I wanted to tell you about this uh, castor oil. It's um, home health castor oil called uh, Cold Press, 100% solvent free. And this castor oil, you wrap on whatever wherever you hurting or aching at and then you 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 after you put it on you can wrap wrap the uh the stuff around you i've been every time i find that i didn't see this tell me about it you know what i mean my packing is going a little better but i'm still a little slow with it these are my tissues because i get so hot oh eat it i'm the oh lord i put it back in the box okay this is something i Wanted to show you before that my sister there gave this to her in the hospital and places she hit because sometimes she coughs a lot or sometimes you you know you have a cold or an allergy or you you're a spitter or sometimes it could be medication. I I was doing something one time I was taking some medication and when I you know would go like this instead of you usually jump out of excuse me for being crap mm, yeah, uh it lingered and long and I that happened to me and that happened to my husband and it wasn't a, it wasn't the greatest thing I wanted to deal with or go through. I started to move that light from back there, but it might be helping us. I'm not going to do anything. But you can put put it in there and reuse it or put it in there and throw it out. But it's like this, and they, you can even buy these, and they have a whole bunch of them. So I believe her daughters are the ones who got these for her. And she gave me one. I wanted one of them. And I be needing that sometimes. But, you know, sometimes these things, you know, don't always smell right when you're spitting all the time. Even when it's in a small garbage can in your room. And uh, I know in the bathroom I have cute little deodorized uh, bags in there for, you know, for any reason. This is the uh, the mouthwash that they had gave me to try to help my gums and my teeth and stuff like that to keep it from being infected or the infection traveling through the body. So I'm still working on that. Y'all pray for me. It's not moving as fast as I wanted. It hasn't. I'm just glad that nothing hasn't hurt me or killed me or, or, or messed with Hannah. So I, to God be the total glory for that. So let me see. Uh, I can't even pronounce this. Chloroxide. Okay, it's an oral rinse. Can't swallow it, though. It's been helpful. It tastes horrible. After you brush your teeth and you rinse with it, which is hard to do the gums because the gums can get um uh, aggravated with this stuff. I wanted to also share teas. I like tea. And these are all different teas here. Okay, revitalized tea, you know. And then you got your three gingers tea. Help with, you know, inflammation and, and all of that stuff and colds and that thing. Your chai black tea. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And then, now I love CFC tea, but this is the first time I had this this brand, but this one is called CSC Bitter Melon. That This is already bitter, but you can feel it clean in your blood. Oh, man. I used to take this and give it to my husband. I said, all right, just take it. No sense trying to put no honey, nothing in it. There's nothing going to help it. 
And even the root itself is even more bitter than the tea. Don't get me started. I always loved green tea, but the best one I always liked was this one, the Chinese green tea. It just was delicious. And it's very good, you know, just to enjoy. And even if you're feeling bad or sick, it's just very helpful. You know what I mean? I like to sometimes drink it even when I don't have a cold or even before I would get one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And I love my wipes, my hand wipes and stuff like that. Sometimes they got the little portable ones and the sprays and the gels. I just like to be wiped down sometimes. Okay. Let me see. And I wanted to show this. Is that adorable that I got it upside down? I think I showed y'all this before, but my nephew Patrick gave this to me. He always called me Aunt Mommy. <laughs> he called me Aunt Mommy since my sister had passed away. You know, I thought that was so beautiful and so cute. I love him to the moon and back. As my niece told me the other day, we had a birthday, uh, Remitia, Dr. Remitia Webster. She said, I love you to the universe and back. And I told her I was going to use it, and I told her I was going to steal it. So there you go. I did. I'm just making sure nothing else is back there. Should be nothing behind me. Now, uh, I wanted to show you this, too. Is this adorable? This is a little booklet that I got. And it's called, That is No Elevator Success. You have to take the stairs. So you know success take time. All right? So this booklet, I had just started using it. Woo! I love it, love it, love it. It was a gift in one of my things. And you guys know I love the kitchen and I love cooking. And I said, I am going to have to film it at some point in some time. So let me show you one at a time. This is one of the myths. I love the, yeah, my kitchen is black and white. In gray, so everything is in those color range. Is this adorable? I love the little the spoon thing, and it's right on here. And you got your right amount, and you can keep it clean. So you know you can get this like this or, or plastic, and some of them you know maybe even like iron. And then it's the same thing with the cup, the half a cup, two thirds, and stuff like that. Oh, I love things of that nature. So let me get to where I'm going with you today. All right. I might have to change the glasses to do it. So that means the reading ones go on. And watch, I'm still not going to be able to understand my own handwriting. I'm still going to be going like this, like this, like this. So don't worry. I guess I make faces all the time. Let me see. I got my paper towels behind me, too. And my snacks. Snacks stays up there. Okay. What is a caregiver? Right? That's what you would say. Oh, ask. Right? You ask that? Well, I'm going to tell you. A caregiver uh, on a regular basis look after the sick, look after the elderly, and look after the disabled. All right? You may be looking after family, a spouse, your children, a child, a parent. You know, it could even be a friend. You got some people that have this as a profession where people get paid. But right now, I was a caregiver and I never got paid to be a caregiver, and that's all right. You know, nowadays they do that, but you have professions, you know, like home health aides. I was one of those before uh, professionally, and I did get paid when I was that, but, um, and I was on call. But you, being a caregiver is not an easy job. Being a caregiver, you want to, you do all you can, you give it all you got, and sometimes you don't feel like you're doing well or doing enough, but you're doing better than you think. You know what I mean? There's just some challenges I'm going to tell you about, and I'm just going to give you my own personal experience. I think my glasses are farther than what I'm talking to you. How about that? You know, um, mm -mm -mm. you know, so that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I was a caregiver for my mother. I was a caregiver, you know, partly for my dad and a caregiver for my husband. My father didn't let me do too much to him. So all I did basically with him is maybe cook or clean. He didn't, he was very fussy. You know, he's very private. He didn't want me to do none of the washing of him or anything like that, you know, but uh, I had a chance to be him, but sometimes you'll get a person that's tough. Now, sometimes when you sick, you, 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 the person gets tough period. And sometimes you might be the only person that they may take the thing out on or just, they're just upset or hurt because they don't have no more, no control like they want. And then people are always telling them what to do. So that could be a that could be an aggravating thing to a person that's ill or sick. I've been there. I've been in a place. I've been on both sides of this fence here. So uh, taking care of my mom was not easy because I was a teenager and I was in high school about to graduate. I was a straight A student and I had to uh, take her to all of her appointments and stuff like that. She had a lot of children, you know, 
she had six of us that was living, you know, out of the 17 that she had, her and my dad, and, you know, 11 boys, six girls, you know the story, and she lost all of them but six, so that's why our ages were so far apart, but I said that to say this, um, I was the only one that uh, was one with no children and no job, basically, I mean, basically, the, the one that could do a little more because my life was a little more flexible, except with high school. But anyway, um, I was able to take her to appointments, uh, you know, do errands and run, uh, make sure, you know, help her to get dressed or dress her myself, you know, do things like that. And that wasn't always easy, you know, like you have to lift and you have to do and stuff like that. But at least I was young. And that's one of the, the, the hard parts. That's not only the hard part. You know, you got to give them medications and stuff. And the medications sometimes don't agree. You got to discuss things with a doctor. You got to have meetings. And then you have to do all kinds of things. If the person used to be a proxy, you know, if the person has property, if the person, you know, it's just so much stuff, a, 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 a health proxy, you know, a person that will make decisions and stuff like that. So... You know, we all did what we can, and we would all, everywhere she had to go, when we stayed with my sisters, and they live in different places, I went with her. If we stayed with my brother, we mostly started to live with him. We were living on our own, but mom got too sick for that, for she and I and my brothers to live on their own. So it was just me and her end up being the only one together. But I said that, too, to say this, too. It's just not easy watching the person decline. It's not easy to watch the person go through all of the different changes. You know them to be this way and now they're this way. And you try not to let on that you're upset. You try not to let on that you want to bust out in tears. You, you, you know, you pray and you look every day for a change. I did that with my mother. I did that with my husband. You know what I mean? My father, his thing went so quick after a while. You know what I mean? He was ill, but his, he, his illness was manageable up until a certain point. And then it just went fast. But with uh, with my husband, you know, he had colon cancer. And they never say what my mother had, but I know she was a diabetic, was one. Everybody in her side of the family was diabetics, basically. You know, and um, he worked for the post office, worked hard, worked well, worked good. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I took her to appointments and things of that nature. And I made sure she was good. And sometimes she wanted to eat things she wasn't allowed to eat. She would get heartburn. She would throw up. She would, you know, and stuff like that. But whatever she did, I tried to encourage her. And sometimes she just would yell or scream or get angry. And this person was always so sweet, easygoing, patient. So don't get upset when the person start changing or, or doing different things out of the ordinary. Just kind of be patient. Sometimes just shut up. Just be quiet. Just listen. You know what I mean? Either way, you might get an, uh, get a little argument, but and I noticed that nobody can argue by themselves or get angry by themselves. And sometimes when they at their comments and they say, I know you, they'll start to talk. You know, say, I know you're doing the best you can. You know, I know you're trying, or I don't want to be a burden. You have to always make them know and feel that they're not a burden. Make them feel important. Make them, they are important, but you, you got to make them feel that way because when you like this, you don't feel important. You feel like you're in the way. You don't want to tell how you feel when they ask you. I've been there myself. You know what I mean? I don't want to say I'm in pain again. I'm hurting again. Seems like I have the same story every day, so I just don't want to say it. So sometimes that can happen. Now, it's bad enough when you get the bad news from the doctor, and it's bad enough when your life has to change, and then it's hard when you have to tell a family. That's a whole nother thing. You got to tell a family. You got to live with it yourself. This is some medicine you have to take that you probably don't want to take, the knowing that you may be sick or dying or even having an illness that's debilitating or an illness that could take you out or an illness that just make you different. You're still alive. You're still going to stay alive, but things have changed drastically. You know what I mean? So the person has to deal with this and they have to live with this. So be patient. Uh, my husband had to go through clinical trials. He had that we were doing good with the doctor and we were happy and everything. And then he couldn't do nothing else. So then they sent us to another doctor and then another trial and stuff. So we went, went through chemo pills and the port in the chest and the chemo in the chest. And I would go to dialysis early in the morning and meet him for the chemo at 11. So we all had this ride going both ways. I had to stop working for a period of time to do this, do my own dialysis treatment, then go with my husband to do his treatment. And that was a long 12-hour day. And 
on appointments and stuff like that. It got so he said, "Hun, I need you to go to work, or I want you to go to work." Maybe I was with him too much. Maybe he needed some air or space. You know, they have their feelings too, and you could get on their nerves too. You know, you're not the only one having an issue or problem about that. They can also have this issue or problem. So, you know, it works both ways. Even for the nicest person, you can still get on their nerves. You know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. The, the way, you know, you wipe this up off, maybe they can hear you wiping it off. The sweeping, the cleaning, the all the stuff. So what can you do? All you can do is love, show love, and be there. Being there is very important. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they fuss, fight, or argue. They are glad you there. They're glad you showed up. They're glad you care. You know, make a spoil them a little bit. Make a big deal. I was still afraid with my husband. I know we couldn't do anything, but still, I act like we could. You know what I mean? I flirt with him, wink at him, and all of that, tell him how good he looked, you know, grab him, what kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Hug him, kiss him, you know, show him affection. And I say, oh, you know, you're sick or you're ill. Or, mm, no, you know, that's the last thing you could do. You know, but my mother called me scornful. And I don't know why she called me that. I didn't know if I wanted to say this to y'all, but you know, I keep it real in the thousand. And I'm like, why is she saying that? I knew she flew somewhere and got bit by something over there. I don't know if she caught malaria or what, but she broke out with spots all over and we were trying to help her and fix her. It affected her liver, turned her eyes yellow. So those are a lot of things to deal with. So, you know, we'll put her in the bath. She didn't want us to wash her. My, my sister Deesa didn't want us to wash her. And she go stay with Yolanda for a little bit. Yolanda was strong and strict, so she didn't want to stay with her no more. But she she loved her. She loved her kids. She loved the whole family. It's just that we did a lot of moving around. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And my brother Mark, he did the best he could. He had a problem with the furnace, so the house was cold. So we were staying there with the house being cold. You put the heat on, the stuff would blow. It blow smoke or something up your nose where if you blew your nose, something black come out. He didn't mean any harm with it. But you know, these are the things that happen. God forgive me, forgive me. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, you will deal with so much stuff from left side, right side. You have family and say, I would help but I can't do it. Or I would help. I don't want to see him like that. Like you want to see him like that. Like you the strong one on top. Girl, you strong. Girl, you got this. That's what you hear. I don't want to hear I got it or nothing like that. Sometimes you need a break. I wonder, I remember one time my husband said, listen, me and you used to go out all the time. He said, but I want you to go to the movies. He said, you're so different when you had one little thing where you went out or you did something or you was happy with something or about something. So go out. I went to the movies and came back. I felt really happy. He had finally broke down and let me get a home attendant, but I got one. I paid out of pocket a young lady named Melanie uh, Warren from our church. And she was a pa uh, one of the, the pastors and stuff, too. And she also had dealt with cancer. I could try to get her on this show. I've still been bothering her about that. But she's a terrific singer. She can preach and everything. But she decided to do this for us. And so when I was at dialysis, she took care of me when I was working and I went to dialysis. He had a regular home attendant in the day. But the days that I went to dialysis, which was three times a week, she would be there those days. You know what I mean? But I had to give him CPR. I had to uh, do so many things, pick him up, wash him up, uh, push him in his walker. And I had to get a hospital bed. That was hard. I It was hard. Uh, you know, we always slept together and been together. I was married to him 23 years, you know, and to have to separate in the bed with him. I didn't know he would really need the bed. I thought he was, you know, joshing or I was trying to keep him strong so he wouldn't go decline if I got him the bed. But the bed really helped. The raised toilet helped. You know what I mean? The uh, shower chair and stuff helped. You know what I'm saying? You know, his birthday is this month, uh, the 15th. You know, um, you know, you go through things, the holidays, you know, miss my siblings and stuff. But, you know, so you, 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 you know, so you do these things. You do these things and you do the best you can. You know what I mean? And you don't know how to, the, you know, the medicine started making his hands dark and his color. And, you know, I, you saw my interview with him and that went really high. But the interview with him and everything... And that's why I like to be transparent. That's why I wanted to show you me on the houses when I got my transplant, stuff like that, because 
people sometimes looking on the other side, sometimes they treat you like you're dead before you're dead. And then sometimes they overly do it. And then you don't always know what to do. So you may do it over and you may do it under. Either way, you feel feel you know like you didn't do enough. But whatever you do, be there for uh, the person. Be there for them and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it's hard to I used to go in the bathroom and cry and then come back out like nothing happened. Hey, come on. Now we're going out. We're going for that walk, right? Or we're going out to eat, right? Sometimes I, you know, fix the favorite meal. Take them to their favorite place. Spend time with them. Don't just throw them in the room. I remember when the guy said, where do you want me to put the bed? I said, what do you mean where you want me to put the bed? Put the bed in the room where I'm at. You know, he said, oh, you know, I'm like, that's my husband. I want to be in the same room with him. I don't want to put him away like he, you know, and then people came to me too about that. Even the professional medical people said, oh, Lisa, you got to put him in a nursing home. I said, listen, he'll die if I put him in a nursing home. He will die fast. He'd be dead. He'd be looking for me. I was living there with him or spend the night or something. I could never leave him. So I said, daddy, you the, you the man of the house. And you hear what they said? I said, I said, you the man up in here. He said, that's right. And I said, you ain't going to know no home nothing like you. Yeah, you roosting up in this house. He said, you're a babe. I said, that's right. And I had his back. And he felt like a man. And I wanted him to feel that way. And he was because he was always a man, always a good provider, a good friend, a good lover, good everything, a good, nice man of God. So whoever you're taking care of, I don't care who it is, you have to be there with them for them. Please be patient. Please take your time with them. I hope I didn't miss anything. You know what I mean? I don't want to keep you on long, but the challenge for me for my mother was going to school. My grades dropped terribly. So I went from an A student to maybe a C student. So, you know, that will affect college. So, I mean, I, I kept trying. And then I went to college. My father died while I was in college. I was, you know, with him, living, you know, and that was a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? So, you, I kept on stopping, going, stopping, going. So I ended up getting a degree in my 40s instead of back when I was in my, you know, 18s and 20s. I, it, but I, you know, you got to sometimes keep living, keep going. And that makes the person feel better, too, that you your life didn't stop and they didn't stop your life because it bothers them if they do or did. Even if they interfere with it, never tell them, never throw that in their face and never let them know that. And you always got to find a way because you love them and they love you. And you got to remember, if the shoe was on the foot, how would you want it? And even if they're a parent, they wiped your behind and everything, your snot, everything you had, you know it. You know, you're whining, you're crying, you're, you're, you're wagging, you're begging, whatever you did, they dealt with it. So now you got to deal with them. So never forget that. Remember that. You know what I mean? Um, going to work was a challenge when it came to my husband and um staying focused on my own health i didn't know if i took the medicine or not then i think i took it too many times my own medicine and then i started getting mixed up with how many times with him because i was overwhelmed i was overwhelmed you need some rest you need some sleep you need your vitamins and you need some peace and sometimes you need to get away from the situation but you need somebody to rescue you that was is willing to rescue you and who is willing to have your back sometimes people mean it or try it or say it and then they never come or they never show up or they fall apart as soon as they see the person and they upset the person. Now you got to calm the person that's visiting down or supposed to be your help and calm down the sick person. So you try to say, oh, you know how so and so is, you know, because sometimes I've been there where I think I cried in front of my mother and I wasn't even crying, but it kept coming out of my eyes. Usually I'm one of them crying. <laughs> I make noise, but I wasn't making any noise. I'm just talking to her, but I didn't know tears was coming out of my eyes. She told me because I made sure I was cleaned up before I went in intensive care. Lisa, you crying? I said, no, ma. You know, I always got a cold, but that was true about me. I used to keep colds all the time and all of that. Easy to get sick. You blow on me. I was sick kind of thing. And I outgrew that. I was able to gain weight. I wasn't scared. I wish she was alive to see me fat. She wouldn't have believed that in a million years. Her sister had back and body. But uh, I lost it, thank God. You know, you don't be unhealthy. But, you know, but those kind of things. Um, If you need help, ask for help. You know what I mean? Uh, stay focused. You know what I mean? Um, oh, you do what you can. All right. Do the best you can. You know what I mean? You, you uh, do what you can. I tell you, uh, try, uh, you know, do try to be, well, I don't know if you should be straight with them, but try listening to them. 
because you got to, you know, even if it don't make any sense, even though you don't know what they're saying, even if you don't understand what they're saying, even if you're trying to figure out what they're saying, you know, you know, like, listen, or nod your head or go, oh, or okay, yeah, or yes, mm-hmm, mm, you know, whatever you can do, oh, you know, even if you, it's not your full apologize. You know, apologize. You know what I mean? I should say, honey, you gotta eat. I don't want to eat that. You know, I can't eat it. Or I don't feel like eating. You know that. And uh, I only would go that extra mile if I knew my husband. That's something he really wanted. I would put my clothes back on and go out. And I would beg him and ask him all day while I'm outside. You know anything? You think he always said no. As soon as I took off my clothes, as soon as I laid down, he said, "You know what? I gotta taste." And I said, "Babe, you ain't gotta taste or not. I asked you all day." But if he really sound like he mean it, no matter if I was tired, sometimes I'd be aching. I might be might be crying and crawling, but I went and got it and gave it to him. It might make, you know, help him to gain weight, help him to feel better. My sister Yolanda, she's, you know, doing her rehab things now. And I bring her stuff sometimes that she really like or asks for because sometimes the person sick need that. You know, after a while, you already had everything with no salt, no sugar, no, no, no. Sometimes you want something to taste like something. You want to taste like a piece of wood. I'd rather you to keep it because I'm just going to lose weight. You know, but you got to, you know, spruce it up or something. Do something. I don't know. Put some onions in it. I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, talk to the dietitian, you know, and the people and the team and the technician, whatever it takes. But caregiving, like I said, is not easy. But you you put things in plans for you to be able to help you to make it doable for you, yourself, and your family, and your peace. But get that break, you know what I mean? And do things with them and for them. Don't have so much fun and they looking for you and they say, oh, you went to the movies, or you went to the park, you went here and there, and they can't never go. That's why you got those wheelchairs. That's why you got the walkers and stuff like that. Some places you could push them. I've seen people that can't talk, can't see, they take them places. Take them. You should take them. You know what I mean? They can hear. It got some senses left, whatever they are. So everybody got something still left. You know what I mean? Taste or something. Taste, sound. You know all the senses. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a dinner. But, <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, you, you, you know when your heart sometimes what to do. If you have to read a book, and then sometimes you need support groups, your own support group, or sometimes the person that's sick needs a support group, too. And God forbid, if they passed away, then you might need a bereavement group and stuff like that. Or a counselor or a counselor. A lot of uh, uh, coaches don't believe in counseling or want to be bothered with counseling, but sometimes you got to do it. I recognized I, I I was still, I didn't know what day it was when my husband died. I, uh, you know, I didn't know, uh, I kept I kept being in that hospital bed he was in until they came and got it. You know, and I would wrap up in his clothes. I did all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I was crying. I was, I don't know, but I, I was depressed and I called somebody because I noticed I, I wasn't recognizing who I was. You know what I mean? I know when my sister had passed away, my husband and Archbishop Rodrick told me, you know, you need to go to counseling because me and my sister was extremely close. So, you know, these things, they say it's a part of life. You be hearing that and sometimes you say, yeah, and you agree. And then it start happening. You you sure don't want it to be a part of your life. And, and it'll seem like nobody can escape it. But I wouldn't have gotten through it without God. I wouldn't have gotten through it without some support. And you always got that one person to help you. And they could be bone tired or too old to help you, but they will show up and come. You know, plenty of people like that. You know, they start cooking. And that's what I do, too. When somebody passed away, um, if I didn't make it to the service or I made it to the service, sometimes I like to go after everybody is gone because that's when your mind bothers you. That's when things bother you. So I would show up then. I mean, start cooking, cleaning, or just bring groceries. And don't stay too long, but I'll listen or I'll sit and I'll be quiet while I'm sitting with you. So you listen to music, I'm listening to music. You, you, you know, looking at TV, I'm looking at TV with you. You want us to sit down and be quiet? I do what the person wants. Because it's about the person and about you. I ain't got time to say, oh, I don't like going to no funeral. Oh, I don't like being around all of that. That ain't their business. I might know I don't like that, but they don't have to know I don't like that. I just show up. Don't say nothing. I don't grow up. I try to show up without being emotional and crying and stuff because I'm upset still about what happened because I probably know the person or know that family member of theirs and I'm howling and crying. I won't go until I calm myself down. If I still act like that, then I avoid them. I remember Archbishop Rochford, I love him so much. We grew up like brother and sister. 
and he went to school with my brother. And I'm telling you, when his wife passed away, the first one, every time I saw him and his kids, I couldn't talk. I would go to talk, but then, you know, throat and my neck. And I was like, listen, I got to do better than this because they're able to go to the church. Me and my husband said, wow, we don't even, every time we go to church, we think of her and see her. And they bothered us. But I said that, we were saying to ourselves, if they can show up, this is they, you know, this is their mother and his wife, and they still just going into that church. If they can do it, we gotta do it too. And that's what we did. But man, you gotta use so many things to make this stuff work. Let me tell you, I say scriptures, I sing, I pray, you know, I man up, I do what I can, I use all the skills I got, every talent, every gift, everything God gave me just to help the person through because they need that help. You know what I mean? So I'm glad you're here for me, you know, and I'm glad you're listening. And I hope this helps you in some way. Thank you for coming into my apartment again. You're going to notice it's going to look better and better. I'm telling you, you know, I was laughing because my bones was hurt every time I try to clean and stuff. So last night I swept every floor and everything like that. And the other day I cleaned the bathroom. You know, I did piece by piece, but I said, at least you got to still start unpacking the bathroom. You keep cleaning the house, but you ain't doing nothing else. You're cooking, but you're not getting rid of some of these boxes. But now that the elevator is back, because it was gone for over two months, I can probably drag something or get something down. I need a microwave. My microwave bin died and it's sitting over there and I didn't know what to do with it or how you supposed to get rid of it or how to get it down. But anyway, I love y'all. And I just thank you so much for always listening, always being there, always understanding. Please comment, like, share, post. Somebody need this. Somebody needs this. And everything I do, I do for you. That's that's uh, part of my life journey. That's my ministry. And that is it. You know, it takes teamwork to make a dream work. And we're a team. You know what I mean? Sharing is caring. So share this. Sharing is caring. So be there for somebody. Do something nice for somebody. Uh, happy holidays coming. Uh, the Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, New Year's. Uh, Kwanzaa, I uh, thank you all. Every birthday for this year, you know, nieces, nephews. I know Tawana had a birthday. Sito had a birthday. Ja had a birthday. Shauna have a birthday coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had so many, many, many birthdays. David, Larry, everybody had birthdays coming up all over the place. You know, Joanne and Esau and Damien and oh man, Marjorie and Jay, you know, so Wendy, my sister Wendy, and Taryn has a birthday coming up, all right? Yolanda had her birthday, so these birthdays have all went by, and there's so much and many more. Paris and I have this same day birthday, my nephew Paris, so you know, so uh, be a blessing out there. Quan, Nita, all of them had birthdays, Shani. All of them had birthdays and stuff like that. Those are my nieces and nephews and nieces and nephews with husbands, wives, and spouses, and just my whole little family. So I love you all, and good night. Enjoy your week and weekend. Oh, happy fall. Ah, now I remembered what I wanted to do. Happy fall, seasons, greetings, the whole bit. I fell in love with this song I wanted you guys to hear, and I knew it was going to go to a commercial first. I wanted to have it ready first. Stop it. I was so blessed with this song. I was like, Lori, what? What am I going to do? Uh, I should have put it on a little more. All this going on, and it seems I'm going like to hit it a little bit. And I didn't understand it. And then he's good. Lord, you are good. That's it. That's it. You've been on a bad day. Yes. My worship and praise, my prayer. I got to get it all on my scriptures. 
The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow with it. I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Come on here. Yeah. I had a favorite one. I can't think of now because the song was in my head and my spirit. I just want you to hear that before I go off. Okay. Hallelujah. Who is the King of glory, the Lord God, strong and mighty, the Lord God, mighty in battle. And he fights for us all the time, each and every day. He never lost a case and he never can be voted out of office. How about that? Shondo, Korobo, V for victory. I love you guys. I can't say it enough. Bless your life and thank you. Mm-hmm. So good. I mean, I had another song that was great too. It was beautiful. I'll play it again next time. Play more songs. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. He says it stopped, but I still see it going. How about that? <laughs> this is funny. Robo Hey, a little more praying. Come on, it says for me to do it. All right. Okay. 